Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. If you're interested in classes or commissioning me, you feel free to go to the website, thefauxschool.com. There you'll see pictures of the various projects I've completed over the last 30 years and a comprehensive listing of the workshops I teach. Now, uh, before we get started, if you don't mind, if you could go down below and click on the subscribe button, that will notify you when I, new videos are being released, as well as when I schedule uh, live interactive ch uh, chat sessions. And if you don't mind, hit the like button while you're down there too. So today, I'm going to teach you a technique called, simply called lime, Tuscan limestone blocks. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we've done is uh, base coated the surface using the quartz primer. I'm sorry, redo, three, two, one. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coated the surface using the micro primer. Micro primer is a lime compatible primer for the Fermilux Marmarino. We're staying in a lime product, we stay within the system, we don't want to make any mistakes. Meaning, don't use the wrong kind of primer, you can have adverse reactions to the plaster and it could pop off the wall. So, micro primer. Uh, so uh, soap and water, it's quartz based, soap and water cleanup. Interior, exterior, you can tint it with pigment, whatever you want, but because we're doing layers of plaster, we're just gonna work right over it with white. Yes, I know the board is a completely different direction than my, most of the ha, other times I do something, but I'm gonna do Tuscan limestone blocks. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take our Pavon trowel, clean trowel, spatula. It's a little dirty because I've been stirring up the plaster. We're working with Marmarino. Marmarino, line base. Be careful. Don't let it rest on your skin. It'll burn you. I mean, it'll give you an irritant. Not going to burn your hole through your skin. Uh, I'm going to use, because this is a two layers of plaster, and then we're going to do some other things. But Marmarino tints with lime compatible pigment. Never paint. Never regular pigments. Always lime compatible. The best thing to do is order it pre-colored. But in this instance, that's going to be a little tough. So I would use Mixol. They're a German brand of concentrated pigments. I know they're very expensive, but it's worth the money. Um, and they're guaranteed to use the, uh, the red cap, meaning they're oxide or lime compatible. So let's get to this. Let's take and load up some plaster. This is going to be the base, and it's also going to be exposed, creating our mortar. So it really doesn't matter because you're not going to see really any of this, but we do want it nice and smooth and clean. off the excess. See this? This is some junk coming off my tape. Love Marmarino. Love Marmarino. There you have it. That's it. We let this dry 100%. And we'll come back and do the next step of the process. So, see you in a little bit. Okay, so the next step of the process. Eighth inch masking tape. Okay, we're gonna go start creating our blocks. So we're gonna put a small row on the bottom and a big row on the top. Or a big row, full size, small, small. The biggest thing is when you're putting this type of tape on, don't stretch it. Okay, it has memory. If you stretch it, you're gonna have a problem. Meaning it's gonna snap back and it's usually gonna happen. Mm, excuse me. Um, when you're troweling over it. You 
see here. I'm looking at my reference piece. Let's put a piece here. Put one there. Ah, a little too long. And when you're doing blocks, look at the walls. Look at old wall or real walls. Um, you're always going to see your mortar joints staggered. I think I just made a mistake. Kind of. Not really. We'll put this one here. And if I was doing this on a project, I would measure everything. Use a level. Make sure it's done right. All right, there we go. So now what I've done is I've made up a very soft yellow. Now it's going to look really stark and bright. But remember, lime products dry much lighter. So it'll be a soft yellow when this is said and done. Just go right over top of the plastic, the tape. So remember, it's going to dry about 50% lighter. Always remember that. It's always dry as lighter. So I always, you'll hear me preach about making dry, dry samples. See the tape just just came down. Dag gone it. Carbon from my trowel in there. That's a little interesting. taking longer than I thought. Not than I thought, but it's just taking a little longer simply because I'm being delicate around this tape. If you go in there and start hammering away at it and go go crazy, you're gonna lift that tape up and it's gonna be a mess. So patience.
much. I'm about to run out and I have that little bit to do. I didn't make up enough. What a knucklehead. Got lucky. Let's clean this up. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take some straight marmarina right out of the pan. Blend that into it. nice as I'm creating all this new color as I'm working this. So as I blend it and I get my new color, see I'm quick working it into it as well. I'm going to compress because I want to get that nice smooth texture that, or smooth appearance of what we're going for. So it looks like we've been around for a long time. I wish I could remember the name of the town that I drove through when I was in Italy last year. This, this was everywhere. It was absolutely gorgeous. You haven't been. I stayed in uh, Tuscany. I flew into Milan in a town. I drove three hours to Montecanti. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. And it was like something out of a. It was exactly what I've always thought it would be like by watching the movies. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna get some more white out of the pail. But yeah, I drew it one day. I got, I, I didn't get lost. It was like just driving, exploring. And um, it's just some cool little town. Just absolutely amazing. I fell in. It's, I wish I could remember. It was, I don't even, I don't even know if it was a town. It was just people living in the countryside. So just by adding more white, I'm getting, going for that look that I want. Meaning, the modeled effect. And you can focus on, you know, individual stones a little bit too if you want.
So for this, it's going to be done for this step. I'm going to dry it 100%. I'm just gathering up all the loose material. There's a lot of material on here. Okay, let's let this dry, come back, and carry on. So, <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. All right, look at the difference. Huge difference. Here it's still a little damp, um, but I can still plaster over that. It's not going to hurt, but see that? Look how light it is. I'm sure at the beginning you were like, whoa, yellow. It's okay. So now, it's a slight process. Boy, it's time to change out my tablecloth. It's a mess. <laughs> All right. Let's take some white plaster. A few things. My tape is pretty much locked in place. This is straight white right out of the bucket, okay? this whole baby. This will start to push that soft yellow down a little bit more. And you'll hear me say from time to time there's carbon deposits. Well, I should be using a Lexan trial. This is going to work to my advantage with some discoloration here and there. Watch out. Ah, what's all that? Something must have fell on my plaster. Now, I'm pulling it tight because I want smooth. I want some of that soft yellow to come through there. And now I'm going to bring in a little bit of this burnt umber, not much. Not much to say, just a lot of working. But you just see I'm just blending it in. And 
now let's go back and get a pinch of the white and finish off with this. And this will take us to the end. So now I'm sandwiching that burnt umber in between, pushing it down, even though I know it's going to dry lighter, but still. That's it. Woo! My arm <laughs> on this little board. Huge wall. Big deal, man. You're going to be beat up. Not kidding. Clean it up. And again, I pulled it so tight that I'm going in now and burnishing as I'm gathering it up. She'll have a slight luster to it. Let's let it dry 100%, come back and reveal the blocks. See you in a bit. Okay, starting to dry. All right, it's dry, so you can see where we're at. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get some wax. And uh, seal it up. And it's gonna do a couple of things. Because some of my color is getting a little bit lost here. But this is gonna bring it back, and it's gonna give it that. So wax always adds, not adds, it sort of restores some of the color. It richens up the finish. It makes these colors pop up. I'm not gonna polish it, I'm just gonna add the wax to it. I know this is a very layered finish, but when you get into these, you know, finishes like we're trying to create, very authentic, that's what we're, you know, that's just part of the process. This is just clear wax. They're pol paste polishing wax. Paste polishing. Paste polishing wax. My gosh. So see how it richens it up? Get the excess wax, <laughs> excess wax off of there. My gosh. Clean, done. Let's see here. That's it. See, that's where my tape lifted earlier. Now, where's a brush just to dust this off a little bit? I don't want to use this, but I'm going to have to. Oh, but I'm not done. What am I doing? I still have all this tape out here to take off. See how messy this finish is? I knew there was another piece in there. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that's where the tape lifted. Ah, oh, it stinks. Ah, bummer. 
What a mess! It's everywhere! There you have it! <laughs> Tuscan limestone blocks! Check it out! Isn't that pretty? See that? That's where my tape lifted. I'm trying to look over here so I can see, but there you have it! Tuscan limestone blocks! Ooh. Nice, nice, nice. There you go. Okay, that's it for that. Before we end up here, if you do me a favor, go down below, hit the subscribe button. That way you're notified when I make new videos. And I also will notify, it'll notify you when I do my live interactive chat sessions. Um, and if you don't mind, hit the like button. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops, complete commission projects for clients all around the world. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.